My earliest memory is riding in my grandfather's boat, arm over the side, hand in the spray. I've spent much of the rest of my life chasing this feeling. All of that has led to this. The Wooden Boat Experience. This week on the Chris Craft, rather than the usual removal of 65 years of rot, paint, grease, and dirt, I've actually begun replacing some pieces of wood. If all goes well, next week I can begin steaming the ribs, installing them, and after that, I can put the transom back together for good. I'd like to thank the people who have recently become Wooden Boat Experience supporters on Patreon. Thank you, Sean, Robert, Jim, Val, and Rob. As you can see, I'm putting together some note card sets, which patrons receive when they sign up to be bilge pumps. A bilge pump is one of our levels of support on Patreon. Thanks for help keeping the Wooden Boat Experience afloat. Okay, now on to the subject of episode 24, the tour boat Pat 2 and its restoration. The Pat 2 was built by George Pat Comstock in 1924. 39 feet long, the boat worked the St. Lawrence River as a tour boat until 1955. In 1956, she became the mail boat on Skinny Atlas Lake on the Star Route 13, as well as continuing to provide tours. This gig lasted until 1991. Pat 2 then sat unused until coming to the Finger Lakes Boating Museum in Hammondsport in 2013. The restoration is being done by a group of determined volunteers, led by Jeff Heath, who is a boatwright, 16,000 hours of volunteer work so far, with the boat only months away from being launched on Keuka Lake. Let's take a look at the project and some of the people who are moving it along. Also, you might be able to get pretty close to the line yeah, on the, on the uh, yes. bandsaw. Or at least down here with the Yeah, I was thinking that's quite a bit to peel off. It is. It, it'll save you a lot of time. Okay. And Jeff, what's your job here? I'm the boat right. I've done all the design and engineering and and um, uh, taught the crew how to do their jobs. And So you're a teacher too. It turns out I am. <laughs> uh, uh, it wasn't an in my intention, but... Uh, uh, but it turns out about 65% of my job has been as a teacher on this project. But it's been great. We, I started with people that really knew nothing about boat building or woodworking, and, um, and we've been working together for now for five years. So So that's how long this project's been going yeah, on? Yeah, it's been going for, on for five years. And um, is this total volunteer? It is total volunteer, yeah, including myself. I'm a volunteer. Very nice. When you restore a boat that's going to be passenger carrying, the Coast Guard wants you to apply uh, what's called a rule, which um, is a series of mathematical formulas that allow you to determine the size of the parts of the boat. It does other things. The rule does other things too, but that's its principal purpose. This boat was extremely lightly constructed. Her frames were uh, 5 eighths of an inch by 1 inch on 6 inch centers. Her planking was five eighths of an inch thick. And so what we ended up doing, first of all, you can't just take a bolt like this and make the planking thicker because the, fr the weakest stays. part will fail, which in this case would, would have been the frames. And uh -huh. The planking worked for five eighths of an inch, but if you put seven eighths of an inch planking on there, it's too stiff for the frame. The planking is too stiff, stiff for the frame, it'll break the frame. How bad were the fr original frames? Do a they need to be replaced any? Oh yeah, most of them. Okay. You can't just make the frames bigger because if the planking's too light, then the planking will fail because right. it won't work together. So what I did was um, I did a bunch of computations and I decided to replace every other frame in the boat with a one by one inch frame. And that gave us the, the area section equal to what the rule required for this size of boat. And, um, uh, and to increase the... Uh, planking thickness, we uh, we glass the outside of the boat. This boat has four layers of fiberglass. The last layer is polypropylene. It's not fiberglass. We put it on the epoxy. See how light this stuff is? Mm -hmm. oh. Wow. Yeah, so this was your last? Yeah, the last layer, and it's also on the deck. And it's right. immensely and, strong. And it's bedded, for lack of a better word, in epoxy. Yeah, yeah. And then you fared the hull, but you didn't fare the decks. You no, just, it no. looked like you had at the seams, you doubled it. No, or well, is there a tape no, or something? Yeah, no, we just butted it, but then we thickened epoxy and, you know, okay. put a. It's a nice look, that little seam. Yeah, we put a, a, you know, just masking tape down and then just covered it with thickened epoxy and sanded that down. And this is the. Um, That's the mat. Mat that you used? Yeah, with two layers of that and then one layer of the roving in between. So, mat 
roving mat than this. Yeah. Okay. In, in crossing directions. We used a Coast Guard approved method called the Bates's method, which involves after putting the first two layers on, which went on diagonally uh, along the boat, um, uh, we uh, put mechanical fastenings in it. But when it was in the green state, when you could, we rolled it on and then you could touch it and it wouldn't come off on your hands, but it was still soft enough to dig with your fingernail. We went along with a staple gun and we stapled the whole thing, uh, all the fabric on the outside of the hull three inches by three inches there's a staple every three inches by three inches we actually made them out and what do you use a stainless steel or stainless steel we have three eighths inch uh, crown three eighths inch leg most houses that are put on boats like this the posting goes through all the way to the hull and those posts it, uh, introduce a lot of water in, in fresh, i bet because it's water so there's always rot around the post and in the bilge and anything that they touch at the bottom is always rotten and we replaced a lot of those those uh, timbers on uh, uh, on this other tour boat so these are actually bolted down to the deck we have a stainless steel bolt that comes up from the bottom and goes through a nut that's inserted in the post like an ikea piece of Ikea furniture. Oh, nice. Um, and we custom made those nuts. And that's what they looked like. Oh, yeah, it does look like the modern furniture yeah. type deal, except a little heavier duty. Yeah. So and prettier. All together, you get um, uh, about an inch and a quarter of surface area around this thing, and I use about a 1,000 pounds per square inch for forces. And right. Built by engineering. Engineering. Yeah. Well, it helps to have an engineer involved. <laughs> The, the house is all constructed out of recycled Douglas fir and redwood that was wine tank stock in this building. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. So when we got ready to build the house, or we're, I was starting to design the house, I kept go, scratching my head and going, what the hell are we going to build this thing out of? And, um, and one day somebody said, well, there's a bunch of boards down in that cellar down there. It was before this building was even renovated as a shop space. I said, show me. So the, the instant I saw Old what growth was down stuff. there, oh, perfect. The highest grade of, 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 of wood that comes out of the forest is tank stock, is saved for, for food tank stock. And it isn't just wine, but the wine casts on this, uh, uh, in this winery were enormous, huge structures. The, the planks down there are 22 feet long and two and three quarters inch thick and 16 to 18 inches wide. Wow. And perfectly clear, not a knot in them perfect wood it probably dates from the 1920s much as this boat right and um, was down in this bit in the basement of this building and now the red is also tank stock and that's redwood uh, and there were uh, large uh, uh, storage bottles of I mean uh, uh, storage areas of wine aging wine that was left in what a great tie-in with the area yeah with yeah and in the in the history of this building so what do you think? What is the weight of this boat altogether? What do you think? Nine thousand seven hundred and sixty pounds. All Most upright. guys don't don't tell you the exact weight. <laughs> they usually have a range of about three thousand pounds. <laughs> well, actually, I uh, uh, we had the water line. The water line was a given. We were able to put use that to take the lines off the boat. So once we had that, and I had the sections, I was able to um, uh, just multiply it out and in uh, using a. A for, um, well, ancient mathematical formula called the Simpson rule that that you can derive uh, um, uh, very accurately you can derive the displacement of a boat with. When, when you do a boat like this there's always surprises. Did you start out with a budget or is the budget just fluid all the time? The budget is fluid all the time. We reached out to uh, foundations and individuals and uh, yeah, we got We'll have about $91,000 in this boat when we get done. What's your budget for the repower? The repower budget was, uh, I want to, we got it right, yeah, $31,500. So that's the 40 horsepower that's a 40 and the batteries. Horse, and that's, that's just, the, that's the 40 horsepower, the lithium batteries. Which are expensive. The lithiums are the pricey ones. And the, yeah, and the charger. How much of a system do you have to have on shore one what is it? Just it's one ten extension cord. How quickly will it? You can charge do, that up. You could also do two twenty. It's got you've got the choice. Okay. Um, from from a complete deplete to recharge, I think it's about four hours. 
Oh, that's pretty impressive. That's not too bad. This system will have two batteries. Each battery weighs 160 pounds. But that gets yeah. you up to 102 volts with at least an eight-hour cruising time. And you're we're planning on a four-hour cruise? Is that your plan right yeah, now? Yeah, we're, we're, we're planning on doing probably about five hours total a day. Uh, will that take you down... Um, down to where Cuba Lake splits? How far down will you be able to go? Uh, well, almost. Uh, we'll be able to get down to Urbana Point and across okay. and back. Um, we'll fine tune that with experience, of course. Right now it's yeah. all theoretical, but they work two days a week. Lately, Jeff and some of them have been coming in every day, but for the long haul, it's been just two days a week. And it's a crew of about 10 people. But it's pretty impressive because not only did you build a boat, but you taught people how to build boats. That's right. That's right. You know, it wasn't like you it wasn't like you brought in ten people that were boat builders. That's right. No, no, that's right. These are ten lay ten laymen, except for yep. Jeff. They're right. You know, they're just, well you've got a this is the screwdriver. You've got a gem with Jeff. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what. So what are you gonna do when this project's over? I don't know. I drive down here from the airport every Oh, really? Yeah, it's 130 miles from here. Do you have any interest in building your own boat? I have a trout boat. Oh, okay. My, my uncle, I never heard of a trout boat till today. Oh, it's, it's just a rowboat. Are they all it's a rowboat. It's someone okay. that name. But they're all made by a lot of local builders. And are they usually around 12 feet long, 14 feet 12 long? 12 or 14. So I've got a 14 foot that my uncle grew up in Branchport at the other end, uh -huh. right? When he, he had one, and he was a market fisherman during the Depression, went out every night. Out of that boat? Go out wow. every night, you put on, you'd uh, put a, a Coleman lantern, you'd hang it up on the side, you'd row the thing, and you'd fish all night long, take it in the penny and sell them. So Peter, what are you going to do when this project's over? Um. I don't know. You'll have a big <laughs> hole in your life, won't you? Well, Suddenly? I'll, I'll time. stop doing this, but I'm restoring a boat of my own. I oh, did that okay. Last year, so I'll continue to do that. And I think that there's a bunch of boats that are in storage here that need to So you'll just go on to another collection. one? Yeah. Awesome. What's your interest? More power boats or rowing boats? Uh, I'm primarily a sailboat guy. Sailboat? Okay. But uh, anything. Do you, do you have a sailboat of your own that you sail? A couple of them. Are you on Cuca? Yeah. Okay. I have a, a snipe. A okay. 1944 Snipe that I restored. Oh, nice. And I'm restoring a 1972 K-Boat. Nice. Yeah. So you are into it. Yeah. What's this for? It. This is the uh, breast hook, which is a piece of wood that goes behind right. uh, the where the, the, rails, the rails are. You're going to glue that up? Yeah. Mechanical fastenings, too, or just glue? Um, well, this will be just glued, and then it'll be mechanically fastened up there in place and has to be shaped the gantries really intrigue me so I, i'm anxious to see that video jeff but did you have more than one chain fall going no we got a chain fall the bow and a chain fall yeah. to the stern and then these two and they were looped in like a triangle yeah. shape yeah. sort of okay all right once yeah. we got it up and got the strap tight yeah once we got the straps on the chain fall went away okay oh yeah okay but when we turned it over the first time, it was it was right side up, and getting it getting it from upside down to right side up was a piece of cake. But getting it from 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 right side up yeah. to upside down yeah. was a huge amount of work. We had three guys show up from the highway crew, where we never got it over. It, uh, I'm smart enough to be in Pittsburgh. That <laughs> we couldn't. I will. I'll I'll have a link to this video for you guys okay. in the. Okay, good. Takes a takes a while. There's a jack here with forks underneath the gunnel, underneath the uh, carling, the, the deck that's lifting this side of the boat up. And you can you can you see their strap, the red strap. Yep. And the rollers are just on dowels, aren't they? Yeah, no, they're, they're on uh, uh, pieces of uh, one and three eighths inch uh, propeller shaft. Oh, okay. Those are just dowels. Oh, those are knots up there. Okay, uh, I see. Yeah, the block. You just got it trapped by the block. block. Covers the end, keeps the end from popping out. This, this is on the Zoom website. Okay. The PAT 2 is a wonderful project. For a restoration like this to occur, so many things must come together. The list is endless and also includes serendipity. One can imagine 
an unknown plan having been in place right from the beginning. I like to think it is the result of a combination of good feelings, good intentions, and community. Humans are best with a common goal, and when that goal is altruistic, they are even better. Mm -hmm.